if this is what we're trying to differentiate, like this is a classic case where like that inside function is really gross and it gets confusing and you just have to have too much in your head to solve it and so that's why errors are very easy to prove. Oh my gosh, I'm stuck so, on this too. Okay, good. So if this is the kind of question I encounter, I'll say I, I can often do chain rule in my head. Actually, I don't have any on the board. I can often do it in my head if it's simple enough, but I know myself well enough to think, okay, my chance of getting an error is high enough that I'm just going to do the proper substitution. So I'm going to say let u equal. Okay. So I choose my inside function, which is... There we go. Okay. And to do chain rule, I will need to know the derivative of that with respect to x. Okay. So just noticing that that is minus x to the minus 1. Okay. So I'll just differentiate this just like a regular power. Power comes out the front, cancels the negative, and then the power reduces by 1. So far, so good. Once I've got that, I also need y in terms of u. So that's 3 to the power of u. Okay, so far so good. So now I'm ready to actually use chain rule and hopefully not get my y's crossed. Okay. So I've got dy on du times du on dx. There's my chain. Okay, dy on du. That's just this guy. So the whole point of doing the substitution is now that looks it's uncluttered and it's very easy. I can just quote the result I already know. Right. So this in fact is three to the u log. Three. Right? This is this is one of those bases where it's not E, so that's why this log term comes along for the right. Okay? So I've done the first one. Now I put this part in, which I've already worked out. That's x to the power of minus two. Okay? Now I've done all the leg work, but this is just kind of a royal mess. It's got a, a U in it, which it shouldn't have. So therefore I will get rid of the U, which is right here. Right? So the actual derivative is, okay, 3 to the power of minus 1 over x, which I began with, times log 3 times x to the power of minus 2. Okay, that's still messy, right? I can still make this a bit better. Um, 3 to the power of minus 1 over x, that's actually on the denominator, isn't it? And so is this. That's also on the denominator. The only thing that's actually on top is the log 3. Do you agree with that? Everything else has a negative power on it. So I guess I would write that as x squared 3 to the power of 1 over x. That's probably the way I would write that. I mean, if I wanted to, I could get rid of the fractional power. Log 3 over x squared. That's actually the x root of 3. That's kind of awkward. That's weird. I don't think there's any clear advantage of this line over this line. So that is where I would end it. In what form does the answer give it to you? Is it very different? Oh no. No, it doesn't give it. It's not like that. How, what, what form does it give? What question is the number? I have no idea. 12C. 12C. Oh, it just leaves the 3 to the power of minus 1. Oh, and the previous x to the x. Just leaves that there? It puts the x squared on the denominator? Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, in my... In my yeah. yeah. I, I can see why they did that, because the original question has it like that. In my head, I'm like, if you're getting rid of one negative index, you might as well get rid of the other one, right? Um, but there you go. That's, that's the process I went through. So doing chain rule out the long way, it helps to eliminate opportunities for mistakes. Okay.